Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today is Chris Rosini, our co-host. Chris, nice to have you with us today. It's great to be with you, Dr. Paul. Wonderful, wonderful. We have a lot of things we can talk about, but we're going to talk about what we always talk about, usually, and that is the monetary system and why people suffer and why the manipulation by the Federal Reserve deserves our attention. They deserve to be audited, and they deserve to disappear. Mm -hmm. Other than that, nothing serious going on, but this week uh, was sort of exciting. I, uh, I like to watch the marketplaces and then try to interpret by just looking at the markets what's going on. And uh, the market it moves rapidly and discounts you know, events, and it's pretty significant. Uh, at other times, if you look at certain investments and in, uh, you know, long term uh, and what the trends are and how to protect wealth, that's a different story. But, but when it's a, in a way, I see the markets as a news station, too, because that is uh, telling us something big is going on at least uh, for an hour or two. People think it's serious. But there was a little bit of that going on, like a lot was going on on Thursday, because uh, I'm sure that uh, there are other days that have been very, very uh, variable, up and down and up and down. But I never personally paid attention to it to see what, they, what happened in the markets on Thursday. Because uh, before the CPI was being released, the, the market uh, said, oh, must be going to be a little bit better. Uh, and the market was up like 500 points. And, and yet, as soon as the markets opened, I mean, uh, the numbers were terrible. There was a lot more inflation. Statistically, it was beating a lot of records. So what, what happened? What happened to the stock market? It went crashing down. I think it was down like 500 points. But that didn't stop them. Certain events occurred. Certain manipulations occurred. The plunge protection team got active. And all of a sudden, I think it closed well over 500. So it was back up 1,000 points. Now, that's a lot of movement. And uh, a lot of movement is purposeful in that people, uh, you know, speculate. They have shorts and longs. And some, we have, some people win and some people lose. Uh, it isn't like they're just flipping a coin, but it's almost worse than that because they're flipping the coin of so many other variables. What's the Fed going to do? What's the Congress going to do? What's SEC going to do? And on and on. So anyway, this, uh, this kept, it, it went on uh, for uh, uh, continuously because there were a lot of people fooled. And not exactly fooled, but you know, a little surprised. You're like, boy, this is a hot day for gold. And at one time, gold was up sharply. And, uh, and there's more inflation, well, that usually indicates, well, there's a lot of inflation, the value of the dollar is going down and gold is going to go up. Well, that didn't happen and gold actually uh, was hit. And people do wonder about that. But I think there's an explanation for that because, uh, you know, there's a lot of rigging going on in the various markets. But there's also, there's also the, uh, a, an item that Mises uh, talked about, and that is the subjective theory of value. Value, the prices of a thing, have a, have, a, have a subjective element to it. So you can't do like a Keynesian and say, well, if we print uh, umpteen trillions of dollars and we do A, B, C and tell people what to do and run COVID and run wars, and they, if we put it in the computer, we'll say, we know what will happen. And sometimes your perceptions are, you might say, well, that's going to weaken the dollar and the prices are going to go up and the people aren't going to like it. But then uh, all of a sudden, different things happen because it's what people are thinking of immediately and, and what the prices are and the price of money fluctuates a whole lot. But there was, I think uh, during that one day, I'll bet there was a lot of manipulation going on, you know, making sure the dollar uh, appears to be strong, and it is compared to the other currencies. Uh, it it, uh, it uh, showed that uh, the uh, real uh, value of gold and silver, which some people would have anticipated, as I do, that, you know, these policies are going to, <laughs> long term, raise the price of sil silver, but not that immediate hour. Uh, something so there's a lot of I interference that can occur that can change and and, uh, and bankrupt uh, some some people, and uh, then you have the government involved, the spending money and the wars that are going on. So there's a lot of variables. So uh, it's not that I 
would have predicted what happened on Thursday because, uh, and I don't think anybody had absolute, there's a people f fast uh, adjusting to it, but uh, long term it's explainable. It's not like this is something that is impossible because with all the variables you can see days like this and quite frankly I, I think we're going to have a lot more. And Chris, one of, the, one of the reasons I've been working with as a partner in, with uh, Birch Gold is the fact that, uh, you know, on days like that, I already just admitted that I wouldn't be involved in that market. And uh, I think advice is good. And that's why I work with Birch because, you know, they, they're available and people uh, can decide to work with them and learn more about how you invest in gold because things change within minutes, which they also change within months, but if you're going to invest to raise your, uh, raise your kids and pay for their education, you have to have a little bit more stability. You know, you can't, you can't depend on hitting it right when uh, the stock market might go up a thousand and down a thousand, this sort of thing. Same way with gold, gold going uh, way down when technically on the surface, like, well, gold should be going up here. So that, this is one of the reasons I work with Birch, is so that uh, our viewers have an opportunity to go somewhere if they, if they want to get more involved in gold. People say, well, it's been terrible last month. I don't know. Well, you know, there's some people who say that's exactly the time we have to get involved or should get involved because of the variables and, and it's a long-term decision making. So this is the reason we have on our screen there a text number. A text number will get you in touch with uh, Birch Gold and they will send a free package of information to get you started or help you along uh, if you have any questions. I tell you, I, I always have questions about what's going on. I try to understand it and coordinate all what's going on, uh, you know, in foreign policy and domestic policy as well as monetary policy. So this would be one place where you could take a look at it and see if it's helpful. And just because there was a, a week of chaos, that's not the reason to steer away from thinking about the precious metal. It might be the reason you really should play, pay close attention. So, uh, Chris, this uh, activity this week, I'm sure you were watching it and uh, finding it interesting. Uh, I sort of have the attitude, uh, I wished it weren't so serious. I wished it wasn't a cause, a result of war and, de and, and inflation and the destruction of wealth of so many people. But it is a puzzle. Uh, it's a puzzle that comes together and anticipating uh, some people do it only for minute to minute uh, to, to use uh, puts and calls and make a buck uh, like uh, every few minutes. And then there are others who are seeking, as I had over the years, seeking to put away the money because I was raised in an age where you worked hard and you were frugal and you were taught to save. And even as a young person, I'll tell you how long ago that was because I started my, one of my first jobs at 35 cents an hour and I was able to save money. So uh, things are different now. But uh, this is the reason that I do associate with a gold company, and that is Birch Gold. So you might uh, t take a look at that text number and uh, text them and see if you can get a hold of that uh, uh, free information. But Chris, uh, I think that uh, you may just have an update on your opinion about what was going on and what could happen, uh, uh, you know, in the in the future. Of course. The big picture is we're very interested in, in, in the gold and the markets and all, but ultimate, uh, we're interested in, in peace and prosperity with uh, liberty being the leading charge. That's, that's, to me, the number one investment we should have is investing in freedom. And the more people who can protect against the chaos that we're in in the middle now and that is coming, uh, the better. So that's the kind of activity that I think about every day. Chris. That's right, Dr. Paul. I mean, our, our purpose here is to uh, help people because we live in a world where the blind lead the blind. And, you know, the central planners are blind. And then they just put out propaganda and all their followers blindly follow them. And, you know, our... What we consider our job is to teach principles and that'll help you to see, you know, in this tough world that we live in. And you have to feel for the people that watch TV or listen to so-called public figures. You know, we know from the COVID experience, uh, the statements of the public figures was of no help to the American people. And it's the same with uh, the financial world. 
you know, we were told initially that inflation was transitory. And then a few months ago, you even did a show about it, how the Biden administration said that inflation was zero percent. And multiple people in the administration we couldn't believe it. They were they were saying it. Yeah, it was zero percent in July, I believe it was. And then the uh, definition of recession was ignored after uh, two uh, down uh, quarters of GDP. And now Biden says there might be a slight recession. Uh, he he recently said the pandemic was over. And yet yesterday I saw he extended the public health emergency for another 90 days. Uh, so the public figures are of no help to the American people. It's constant contradiction. Same thing with Fauci. So you have to wonder who are they working for? Obviously, this is not serving the public in any sense whatsoever. They just want the public to obey what is uh, what they're told. And, uh, you know, it's a real shame. So that's why it's so important to learn principles. And when you understand principles, it doesn't matter what any of them say. You know, you know, this is what is is true. And, it does, you know, we can then prepare yourself. And that's why we uh, mentioned Birch Gold to navigate through all of their lies. Very good, uh, Chris. And, uh, you know, the um, things that we're looking at now, I frequently compare it to uh, uh, what, what uh, the country went through and the monetary system went through in the 70s because I had uh, gotten interested in Austrian economics uh, as it, we were witnessing the breakdown of the Bretton Woods and the, witnessing the disappearance of the pseudo partial gold standard, which was Bretton Woods, and uh, the predictions that were made. And, but I was deeply influenced by that. And then, so uh, it was a, a really a big issue and a, and a big time when uh, I, I personally listened to and just was wow when Nixon gave his speech of getting off the gold standard and all the things that that uh, that followed, but you know that ushered in a terrible decade. There was a lot of price inflation, a lot of unemployment. They introduced a term which some of the Keynesians say we don't know much about that stagflation stuff, but that's been around for a long time. Stagflation and inflationary depressions. They've been long around a long time. You can have inflation. Uh, our system now says get inflation, that'll boost the economy, which was a crazy idea. But they, they, uh, you can have inflation. As a, an example would be Zimbabwe and Venezuela. Prices are going up, but there's still a big, a big depression going on. But in the 70s, uh, the, uh, there wasn't as many uh, items to watch and all the statistics as now. There's so many variables. There's more variables. I think we're in a lot worse shape than we were in the 70s, and that was a bad, a bad decade. And they, the, uh, the, the variables uh, back then, though, I, I, I recall that the, the, the one thing that all of us would watch would be the Fed release of the money supply. And they would come out once a week, and uh, what was it doing? Because they never have control. They have uh, they have manipulation, and they can affect interest rates. But they really can't control exactly the supply of money or where the money is going, and they can't control the spending either because that's a congressional thing, and that's why it is. But uh, as I recall, the statistic that was uh, most uh, impressive to everybody interested in that, especially gold because gold went from $35 an ounce up to $800 an ounce. So that was uh, a very important uh, de decade. And uh, there's one other thing that uh, occurs, whether it was the conditions of the 70s or now or in between, that we don't talk about a whole lot, uh, but Austrian economists uh, talk a lot about it. And that is banking, instead of having a banking system where you put, put your uh, money uh, and the, and the uh, bank then holds the money and pays you for it, and then they loan it out again. But they don't do anything else. They don't speculate with it. They don't take, if you put $100 in, they don't have a gimmick where they can turn it into seven or $800, and that's called fractional reserve banking. So fractional reserve banking generates uh, probably uh, more uh, actual money in the money supply going up than just the uh, monetizing of debt. But they go together, they're the same thing. So it's a system that works where if they, uh, if they monetize some debt, and a lot of it, and it's getting bigger all the time, and then that gets into the system, 
there was a, uh, a, a, a just a rough estimate, uh, a, a rough estimate of what that might generate. So if you put a billion dollars out there, it might turn into eight, nine, or ten billion dollars. It was unpredictable because it depends on what the people do with their money. And that's why, you know, we pumped in trillions of dollars after COVID and the, and the recession was starting. And, <clears throat> and sometimes things didn't do exactly as they thought because they don't know. It's human actions. It's human activity. It's unpredictable. And that's why economic planning is so bad. And then this whole idea, oh, well, we can regulate it, regulate it because we can control the interest rate. Yeah, they, they, they really control it very well. Well, we want interest rates to be somewhere between zero and 20, and we'll keep working at it. And literally, you know, it had been done. There it is, zero, and credit card uh, interest rates could get up to 20%. But uh, they can't control it and pretend it, and yet they are our, supposed to be our saviors. They know how to regulate their economic uh, planners, and they can finance wars, they can take care of the banking system. It's, it's a morally corrupt system that uh, festers. And uh, eventually, though, uh, we have to look out uh, for the, uh, the big bust, and uh, that uh, uh, ends in what they call a crack-up boom, because people, people get so nervous they don't know what to do. They just get me out of here. Sort of an exaggeration what happened on Thursday. Get me out of here. Get, get, get me in it. Get me back out of it again. And, and that is uh, just a hint of what a crack-up boom might look like. And uh, it's been known, it's in there, and Mises has written about it. And uh, it really uh, concludes an era when that happens. You don't just repair the crack-up boom easily. And right now, if we did all the right things, we could repair it. If it were a, a depression like in 1921, that was repairable. But we're not, in, uh, we're not able to do that now because it's politically unacceptable. But if we did the right things, cut spending and get out of the way and get rid of the Fed and, uh, and live within our means and, and don't steal our liberties away with lockdowns like they did with COVID and not fighting all these wars, yes, we could get out of it. But that's how, many, that's how much chance we have of doing that in a, in, a, in, a, in a political, calm, cool, collective way. This is not going to happen. That's why we have this program we talk about bad times are coming, we all should start to prepare for it or continue to prepare for it. Right, Dr. Paul, and one of the ways is understanding just some basic economic principles. Obviously, and nobody should be shocked that the Inflation Reduction Act did nothing to bring down inflation. Um, but one thing that we have to be alert for is uh, if they start talking about price controls, because price controls lead to shortages. And, you know, the government's going to uh, pretend like it's the white knight coming in, but like, we're going to stop these businesses from charging so much. But that just messes things up even further. I mean, if let's say the market price of eggs is $5 and the government says, you can't charge more than $2. Well, what happens? What happens when there's any type of sale? People will rush to buy more eggs at two bucks. It's a sale. But the producers of the eggs, because of inflation, their costs are still, are still rising. And they can't sell for more than two bucks. So they're, they can't make a profit. So what ends up happening? They pause production. They stop production. Nobody else goes into the business because you can't sell eggs for more than two bucks, government says. And that's how price controls lead to shortages. But, you know, even though that is so basic, there's an angle from people that like power. And that's because when there's empty shelves, then they start rationing. Then they, and we could think of COVID of all the stupid rules that they created. Imagine them rationing food. You know, that's, if your social security number ends in an odd number, you can get eggs on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I have a short story, because my grandparents lived in Poland during World War II under the Nazis first and then the Soviets. So I know a bunch of stories. One story, my grandmother said she was coming home from somewhere and she had some meat and she's hiding it in a bag. And uh, on her way home, she notices, you know, a busybody following her. So she quickly runs in the house, takes the meat out of the bag, throws it into like a hole that they had near the attic. So this person comes in to check, make sure what's going on in this house, didn't find any meat. So that's the level that government can make people sink to. 
with price controls with shortages with rationing and that's why it has to be nipped in the bud because if they start talking about price controls people should rise up against it immediately because that's a, a very important subject because uh, we did uh, witness that in the 70s and I was impressed with how quickly they had a bad effect like 24 hours or 48 hours uh, everybody's uh, uh, prices were raised and they thought well people say well they can't raise the price their tank is full of gasoline and they only paid such and such for it so they should sell it to us for that yes but they have to replace it at the new price and, uh, and, and they, might, they won't be able to so it is immediate, effective, and it's uh, very destructive. It just has, what has happened, I, I used to uh, think about that back in the 70s. I thought, this is, when you ruin the pricing structure, you're in a, you're in a socialist system. Uh, even though they don't declare the government owns it, it's very socialistic if they're controlling all the prices, and that's what happened. But, uh, you know, the one thing that happens is the more failure there is with uh, economic intervention uh, and, the, and the tyrants get worried about it, uh, the more lies they have to tell. They only can, they lie to get in office, but when they start, when their system crumbles, they even lie more so than they use force too. And that's what we were seeing in, in the COVID thing. And, and it was deadly. They had to violate liberty to pretend that they cared about the people. And now we're finding out all the treatment the government was paying for, and they continue to do it, actually made conditions worse. And let alone what the economic conditions were made worse as well, but the medical conditions were, were made worse. And, um, you, you know, the, the groups that get involved in this, one thing they have a little bit of a problem with, I think most people agree with me, at least those who are listening and viewing today, and that is that uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, lying is going on. Uh, and Chris, I think, already mentioned they can't even define, you know, a recession or an inflation. They can't define it. They've lost contact with reality, and some of them, it is, it's not a moral issue with them. It's a, uh, a utilitarian issue that if we can lie enough to them, we might get elected. Uh, we're hoping that the lies are being more identifiable right now, and things will change, and we always have to keep doing that. But uh, that, that is what they resort to is... Uh, Tell, telling lies, and it's, it's based on the lies, and um, you, you know they they live in a, a, a weird weird world. Uh, they they get on the air running for high offices, and they get like the Supreme Court, and they say, well, what, you know, this is a tough question, so I hope you can answer this one. What what is a woman? Oh, we don't know what a woman is. What, what do you expect from us? You know, that's the kind of craziness that's going on. And a lot of people recognize that, but they're still out there doing the same thing. They, they lie through their teeth because they're not capable of the comprehension of what the truth is, and they have no desire, and they don't believe it's possible that anybody can have access to, to truth. So they are challenging something that has been known since the beginning of time, and that is that there, uh, people have a sense that there is a moral higher law that if, you have, if all you have to do is open your eyes and ears, you will be aware of, of it. Uh, but uh, we have a system now which is based on lies and is based on the uh, intellectual rejection of a moral code, you know, and they feel very comfortable. So they, ha they have no guilt, no guilt, no shame, and they just march on and on. And, uh, and hopefully, the one thing that uh, uh, Daniel and I use, when we're talking about it, I usually say, Daniel, don't worry too much because we're waking up people. They're going to look at this and say, this is a horrible. And I think some people did wake up uh, uh, did wake up with uh, COVID. A lot of people now, uh, they're, not, uh, they're not buying into the uh, uh, booster shot. The government has them a handy <clears throat> just in case, but they bought it billions and billions of dollars, but the people aren't taking it. So uh, truth, uh, truth is very dangerous to those who uh, depend on tyranny, and uh, we hope we can encourage that effort. Excellent, Dr. Paul. I will finish up. Yeah, at, along with what you were saying, what you're talking about is the, this lust to dominate that exists. I believe the Latin term is libido dominandi. You know, there are people throughout all time, this is nothing new that we're going through, 
that they have this lust to dominate, and they're willing to ditch reality if it furthers uh, what they believe to be their cause. Uh, they try to control the uncontrollable. That's what politicians in modern times and central bankers do. And, but they do fail. They failed in COVID uh, in the sense that they didn't get their passports and, and uh, you know, to monitor every movement that we have. The empire is losing control. Daniel pointed it out this week. You know, the U.S. is used to bossing everyone around. And one country after another, they're starting to gain the confidence to say, no, we're not going to listen to you anymore. And the Fed is losing control of money. And that's what this inflation uh, episode that we're going through is proving. You know, they're trying to control the market. The market cannot be controlled by human beings. You know, this is very basic. But again, that lust to dominate overrides the truth. So they, uh, you know, they continue to do what they do. Uh, we have to just keep pushing the ideas of liberty and non-intervention in the economy, non-intervention overseas. The Fed should not even exist. But even if we get these things, it is important to realize that we're not going to create a free market utopia uh, either. You know, at the most, our ideas would dominate someday, and I believe they will. Uh, but the, the intervention is that libido dominandi will still exist. The people out there will still exist. They may not have as much influence, but they will work night and day to get that influence back. So they just have to be kept at bay. Right now, they run the show, and that's why everything's falling apart. But that lust to dominate has to be kept at bay. The U.S. Constitution was meant to do that. It failed. Uh, so, again, something will have to be done to keep these people at bay. Very good. You know, and what we're talking about, I want to apply, as I have my closing statement, uh, to the issue of money, or whether they've lied to us about our money, whether they lied to us about the Federal Reserve and whatnot. Uh, but money, for it to have worked for thousands of years, they uh, had a uh, unit of account, uh, and they had something of real value, like gold and silver. It's uh, all the way back to biblical times. This was, this was a known uh, issue that uh, you were supposed to have honest weights and, and measures. And uh, that's, that's the way it has been. But we uh, have drifted away from that a long time before even the Bretton Woods broke down because it was when we had the Federal Reserve established that was designed to take care of the bankers and, and uh, the people who want more spending and you camouflage just with monetizing debt and this, this sort of thing. And uh, that's why the, the definition of a monetary unit is very important. The unit of account uh, should be a weight of something. And if it is, then the government has a lot of more trouble, you know, uh, going into a fiat system and passing out the money to their favorite people. Right now, all this uh, uh, inflation, monetary inflation, is going to the wealthy. They benefit, but the average person gets stuck with the higher end cost of living. The people who have any complaint at all about the higher cost of living, higher prices for food and all, should say, you know, they're taxing us to death. They're, they're doing this, and we're paying the bills for, you, you know, the wars and the COVID and all this economic planning. But uh, it, it, is, uh, it is amazing that, well, one thing now I think is amazing and good is more and more people are saying, why are we sending 67 billion dollars to Ukraine to fight a war. I thought, I thought we learned a lesson in Vietnam. Well, that was short-lived. I, I, I thought we learned a lesson in Iraq. Well, that, yeah, they did that for 20 years. They finally got tired of that. Oh, Afghanistan, that's, that's the, where the real war, uh, that's the important war. Well, after 20 years there, they had to give up on that. So uh, they, they continue to do it. People enrich themselves, and it's all because of the definition of what, what money is. And, uh, but it's part of that system. If you can't define a woman uh, and you, you can't define truth, how are you going to define money? Uh, and, and people end up saying, well, we'll tell you what it is and we'll, and we'll do like Chris uh, warned us against. Or we'll, if people charge too much, we'll put them in prison for it because they charge too much. And it was a death sentence in some of the, uh, some of the tyr tyrannical countries if you violated these rules, whether it was fascism, Nazism, communism, whatever, because you could not point out uh, that, the, uh, that, the, that the officials have no clothes and that they're just lying through their teeth. So it really boils down to what the founders warned about. Yes, 
Uh, we're giving you a pretty good found, a constitution, and it is and was a pretty good constitution, but uh, he, they warned us that if there's not a moral society that uh, can work within the moral bounds, and it's all done by lying and scheming and conniving and, 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 and rewarding the special interests, it won't work. So we're at a, at a crossroads right now. Uh, if this condition continues where you can't even define anything or you might get, uh, uh, you know, uh, canceled for it, you might be, lose your jobs and these other things. If that, alas, uh, you, you know, we're, we're in bigger trouble than we think. I keep thinking and believing that can be reversed and we do see signs of that. And uh, we see signs that uh, the parents are waking up about, maybe we should pay more attention to the government teaching our kids how to live and letting them set the moral standard. So there's a place, there's, and the one thing is, is we have a philosophy of government built on the principles of morality that um, should be able to be used to convince people of it. The other side, why people go along with this, why should they bow to Nancy Pelosi, you know? That, that, that blows my mind, <laughs> you know? So I think that people have to wake up. Ultimately, it's the people that make the decisions. Governments uh, are a reflection of the attitude of the people right now. The attitude of the people have been conditioned, and it's a sickness. And just take, for instance, when did, some, when did a lot of this stop? The progressive era. 1913, we ought to cancel 1913, get rid of the income tax and get rid of the Federal Reserve and get rid of the foreign policy that was established at that time. Believe me, we would all be better off and a lot happier. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.